Okay, so in today's notes, we're going to take a look at rectangles and rhombi or rhombuses. So up here at the top, you can see how all three are related in terms of a family tree. So both a rhombus and rectangle are a parallelogram. So at the top, to define a rectangle, uh, a rectangle is a parallelogram, so meaning it has all of the parallelogram properties with four right angles. So moving down, so the properties of a parallelogram are all parallelograms where the opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, diagonals bisect each other, and um, consecutive angles supplementary. Now what's more, because it's a rectangle, is that it has congruent diagonals. Okay, the diagonals are not perpendicular. It does have all right angles. And diagonals bisect the angles, no. Consecutive sides congruent, no. So let's start by drawing in the diagonals for rectangle ABCD. So it's diagonal AC and diagonal BD. Okay, so I'm actually going to redo that in black. And I, your, I know yours is pretty dark. So A, C, and B, D. So you're going to do like you did with the parallelogram and note uh, what triangles are congruent based on that. So let's note for right now that opposite sides are congruent. Okay, the diagonals are congruent, so let's call this point E again. Since the diagonals are congruent and then are going to be bisected, we know that BE is congruent to DE, but also congruent to CE and AE. Okay, and then the angles, two parallel lines cut by a transversal, uh, this angle one would be congruent to this angle one, but because of the isosceles triangles uh, in the inside, um, this is also a one, a one, and then we'll call this two and two, okay? And then feel free to do that with triangle BEC and AED at the top. But go ahead right now and note your congruent triangles. And also classify the triangles too if you have time before we go over it. So why don't you pause this and then unpause when you're ready. Okay, so triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA, and then triangle BCD is congruent to triangle DAB, and these are scalene right triangles. Scalene right, because it has a right angle right here, right here, right here, and right here. Down below, ABE is congruent to triangle CDE, and triangle BCE is congruent to triangle DAE. And these are isosceles right triangles. I'm sorry, there's no right. They're just isosceles. Yeah, because angle up top, uh, angle A, B, C, and B, C, D, those are right angles. But down below, triangle A, B, E, this one, there's no right angle in there, same as the other three. Okay, the rhombus. So a rhombus is a parallelogram with all sides congruent. Its properties. Uh, because the parallelogram, again, opposite sides parallel, opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, diagonals bisect each other, and consecutive angles supplementary. Because it's a rhombus, um, um, the diagonals are not congruent, but they are perpendicular. Does not have four right angles, but the diagonals do bisect the angles. And then, of course, your consecutive sides would be congruent because 
all four sides are congruent. So let's take the ruler and draw in your diagonals. Okay. So all sides congruent. So BC congruent to CD, congruent to AD, congruent to AB. Let's put point E here. Okay, the diagonals are not congruent, so therefore BE is congruent to DE, but AE is not congruent to CE. And then diagonals are perpendicular, so we've got right angles in here. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could put a one, a one, a two, a two, so on and so forth. So take a minute to do that congruent triangle activity, and we need to make a change so that it is in the correct order. This BCE should be um, CBE. Okay, now go ahead and do that. Once again, pause this video and then unpause when you're ready. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. The next one, BCD is congruent to BAD. And these are isosceles triangles. The small ones inside, so ABE is congruent to ADE, and CBE is congruent to CDE, and actually all four of these triangles are congruent, and these are scalene right triangles. All right, so let's flip to the back. So we have a rectangle, find each length. Well, CD. So CD is congruent to AB and AD is congruent to BC. So CD would be five inches and BD, um, or rather AC, no, AD. Oh, it's not listed. Okay, so now to find BD. So BD right here, well, I need to know, so that's a 12. So to find BD, it's a part of this triangle. It actually is the hypotenuse, and that's a triple. It's the 5, 12, 13 triple. So BD, the diagonal, is 13 inches. So that means the other diagonal, AC, is also 13 inches. The last piece, AE, well, if this diagonal is AC is 13, but I only want from A to E. Well, AE is congruent to CE, so cut 13 in half, and we get six and a half inches. And number two, what is the measure of angle one in the rectangle to the right? So remember, your diagonals are congruent. So this is congruent to this, which is congruent to that, and congruent to that. So angle one, I'm going to use this isosceles triangle right here. So if this angle is 34, this angle is also 34. So this angle right here, the interangle sum of a triangle, so 34 and 34 is 68. So then therefore 180 minus 68, we've got to borrow. So 10 minus 8 is 2. And then we get 7 minus 6, 1, so 112. So this angle is 112 degrees. And then I have a linear pair right here. So angle 1 would be 180 minus 112, which is 68. So the measure of angle 1 is 68 degrees. Number 3. So in parallelogram PQRS, the measure of angle P algebraically is 7y minus 8 degrees. Find the value, so that's numerically of y, that makes PQRS a rectangle. Well, if it was a rectangle, the measure of angle P would be 90 degrees. So substitute 90 for the measure of angle P 
and solve for y. So add the 8 over, we get 98 equals 7y, divide by 7, and y is 14. And then last on this page, we have rhombus a, B, C, D. So let's sketch that the best you can. All sides are congruent. So here's A, B, C, D. And it talks about the measure of angle C, B, D. So tracing C, B, D, that's this angle right here. So if this is 50 degrees, this is also 50 degrees. And actually, since opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, those two are as well. The measure of angle A, so now if I look at this triangle, we have 100 degrees so far, so therefore this must be 80. So the measure of angle A is 80 degrees. In number five, the length of the shorter diagonal of a rhombus is six, and the length of a side is five. So let's draw a rhombus. Draw in the diagonals. And it doesn't have to be drawn to scale, but it says the length of the shorter diagonal is six. So for me, this angle is smaller than that angle. So therefore, if I cut six in half, this would be three, three. And it says the length of a side is five. So all four sides are five. So the perimeter is easy. Um, five times four, our perimeter is 20 centimeters. Okay, find the area. Well, within this rhombus are four congruent right triangles. Okay, so if I look at this right triangle, Okay, I have sides of three and five. This must be four because it's a triple. So therefore, this is four. And we have four, three, four, five right triangles. So the area of one of those triangles is one half base times height. So one half, the base and the height are three and four. One half of four times three, well, two times three is six. So then the area would be four times six, or four times the area of one triangle, and the area is 24 centimeters squared. If you're at all uh, interested, there is an area formula for a rhombus. It's one half the product of diagonal one times diagonal two. Well, one of my diagonals is eight, and the other one's six, if you add the two fours and two sixes. So half of six times eight, Half of 48 is 24. It works out. All right. So to finish with some coordinate geometry proofs. Now, if you want to prove that a quadrilateral is a rectangle, uh, you first have to prove it's a parallelogram using one of the methods on the notes uh, for day two. Then, okay, you have some options. To show your parallelogram is a rectangle, there's option number one, option number two. So option number one, let's go back to the pen, would be to show that one angle is a right angle because the definition of a rectangle was a parallelogram with one right angle. So to do that, um, we use the slope formula to show that the slopes of adjacent or consecutive sides, and we want the slopes to be negative reciprocals. Why? Because remember, perpendicular lines give you that right angle. Another method would be to show that the diagonals are congruent. Okay, to show congruent diagonals, that would be the distance formula. Okay. We want to use the distance formula and show that the lengths of the diagonals are equal, therefore the diagonals are congruent. Now if you want to show that you have a rhombus, you could show that it was a parallelogram first and then choose another method, um, but to make it easy, okay, we have, where's the highlighter, we have a rhombus when all four sides are congruent.
If all four sides are the same measure, it is a rhombus. So that's the method we use because it's the easiest to remember. So we use the distance formula to show that all four side lengths are equal and then therefore congruent. Okay, so then it says below, note that a parallelogram, so if you did want to show you have a parallelogram and then the consecutive sides are congruent, it therefore is a rhombus. Okay, so let's take a look at our last two questions, which are two coordinate geometry proofs. So one, we're going to use uh, midpoint and distance, and then the second one, we're just going to use distance because that's a rhombus. Okay, the coordinates are given, it is graphed, um, so we want to prove ABCD is a rectangle. So we're first going to show that it's a parallelogram first, and to do that, I like to use the midpoint. So we want to show that the mid, um, diagonals share the same midpoint. So the diagonals would be BD and the other diagonal AC. Okay, so midpoint formula, add the x's divided by 2, add the y's divided by 2. Add the x's divided by 2, add the y's divided by 2. So BD, the x's are negative 3 and 3, and the y's are negative 4 and 4. For AC, the x's are 0 plus 0, and then the y's are negative 5 and 5. And I'm also going to take a minute to draw the diagonals AC and BD. And it looks like they cross right here. Whoops, where's my pen? At 0, 0. And when we do add the x's and y's and then divide by 2, we do indeed get 0, 0 for both. So my conclusion would be that since the diagonals share a midpoint, that's what just went on with my calculations. Because they share a midpoint, this tells me they bisect each other. And then therefore, quadrilateral uh, ABCD is a parallelogram. Now I want to show that this parallelogram is a rectangle. And if I'm going to use distance, okay, I'm going to show that these diagonals are now congruent. Okay, so the distance of diagonal BD, um, when I subtract the x's, we get negative 6 squared. Subtract the y's, we get negative 8 squared. And that is equivalent to the square root of 100. And then the distance of AC, we subtract the x's, we get 0. Subtract the y's, we get negative 10, which also equals 100. Okay, which is good. So off to the side, I'm going to write my conclusion here. So since the diagonals are the same length, okay, that tells me they are congruent. Therefore, I'm going to refer to it now as parallelogram uh, ABCD since I just above showed it was a parallelogram. So parallelogram ABCD is a rectangle. Okay, and we're done with that one. And last but not least, we're going to prove that quadrilateral real Given the coordinates, uh, we want to show that it's a rhombus. So as it's set up, we find the distance of all four sides. We want to show that they are all congruent. So when I subtract the x's for our e, we get 12 squared plus, subtract the y's, 
5 squared for EA, subtract the x's. We get 5, subtract the y's, we get negative 12. For AL, subtract the x's, we get negative 12, plus the difference between the y's is negative 5. And then last, RL, subtract the x's, we get 5. So 5 squared, subtract the y's, we get negative 12. So that up ends up being, for each one, the square root of, well, 144 and 25 is the square root of 169. And you do not have to reduce it. I realize that's a perfect square, just like 100 was in the last one, but you do not need to reduce. So my write-up, I'm going to squeeze it in over here. So since the lengths of all four sides or distances, so since the lengths of all four sides are equal, then all four sides are congruent. Therefore, quadrilateral real is a rhombus. And that's it.